This is Leisha Holmes and I'm your host on the Recruiters Recruitment Podcast brought to you by Hoxo Media and I'm so excited to welcome to our channels today uh, a lady who I've got huge admiration for, for the many, many um, hats she, that, that she wears, but also just because she's been a, a fantastic supporter of our channels too. Welcome to you today, Sandra Patel-Stewart, who is the CEO and founder of Transition Partners, is also a fellow host on, a, on her own podcast, which is Let's Talk Leadership, which I know you're going to talk to us about, and is a DNI ally. So many hats there. Welcome to you today. How are you? Hi, Amber, thank you. Thank you for having me. I know we've talked about this for, for a while now, and obviously it's um, taken a bit of time to, to get it booked in, but um, I'm looking forward to this. Yeah, me too. And as we record this, we're, we're sort of heading towards hopefully the last weeks of uh, lockdown three. I think part of the challenges have been uh, the juggle, the juggle of uh, being working mums as well as everything else. But thank you so much. But, so for those who aren't yet familiar with your businesses, what do you do? Yeah, yeah, of course. So, um, so as you said, Sandra Patel Stewart, I'm CEO and founder of a company called Transition Partners. Um, I've got 19 years recruitment experience now. I'm 40 this year. Um, although I keep getting told that I don't look anywhere near it. You really don't look <laughs> it at all. You look fantastic. Um, <laughs> Thank you. I can't believe I've been in recruitment for this long and and still survived. Um, if I'm honest, but um, and it hasn't come without its challenges. It's been a very rocky road, um, which I'm sure we'll go into um, at some point on this um, on this channel. Um, but I um, so we're coming to our ten years at Transition Partners now, um, and we specialise in um, permanent contract recruitment within the tech technology sector, digital, um, bit of business change, transformation, but mainly more recently on the tech and digital side across the UK and um, internationally um, as well. So we opened up an office in Berlin almost, is it coming up to three years? I think, to, yeah, I think it's coming up to three years this summer, um, which has been going really, really well. Um, and we are looking to expand in other um, areas as well um, as and when we can. Fantastic. Well, it's a great sector to be part of. And yeah, you definitely don't look like you've, you've spent more than a couple of years in recruitment. Never mind, maybe 20 years. So we'll, I think we'll have to do a second. Hiding show. all the grey hair well, and not, all the wrinkles. And... <laughs> you, look fantastic. you do look fantastic. You've got really high energy. And, you know, I'm just really, really excited to get to know you better. And I think the topic today is, is one that might shock people because it's not necessarily something that gets talked about. But when you, we sort of talked about potential topics, this was one that I just thought, yes. Yeah, because it's just never, I've never seen or heard of anybody talking about this before in a recruitment context. So we're going to talk about underdogs and being an underdog. Yeah. So just give us some context then. What's, you know, what's your background, for example, and then let, let's introduce the topic. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, I guess one thing I'll start with is I was, I was thinking about this last night and I know obviously you sent me a few questions beforehand and, you know, you said it might go off piece and, and obviously I run my own podcast and, and I run a couple of vlogs as well. And, um, you know, so I know that these things can go a bit off piece. It's a bit, it, it's weird being on the other, on the other side as well, actually. Um, and I thought, and usually with anything like this or an event, I, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm on a number of panels and things for events and things. Usually I'll think about the questions and I'll prepare answers and I think, and I just thought, you know what, I, that's not me. I'm, and, and because this is the underdog as well, I was like, well, I'm just, I am what you see is what you get, mm -hmm. which often gets me into trouble, which often lands me <laughs> in sticky situations, um, you know, and I quite often regret, you know, some of the things and, and, you know, situations that I've been in, but I guess it's how you move on from that and what you learn from that. Um, so I thought, right, I'm just going to be me. I'm going to be open and honest. So everyone today is going to hear whether, whether they like it or not, the real me. Um, and, um, you know, in terms of your question about my background, so how far do you want me to go back with background, by the way? Well, just what contextualise it. Our audience is recruiters, aspiring leaders and people that run companies like you do. So I think it's important yeah. to give it some chronological order because it's important yeah. to the topic. Yeah. OK, so. Um, so I went to university in Manchester. I'm, I'm a northerner. Um, Yorkshire born and bred. I was born in born in Bradford um, to university and did a business IT degree. Um, I had no idea what I wanted to do, but I knew I wanted a career. Um, I'd always been brought up by um, my parents, particularly my dad, 
um, that was very, very heavy, heavily pushed um, education. And, you know, it was always kind of, you need to go to, you need to see everything through, you need to go to uni to get a good job, to earn a decent living. Um, and that's what you need to do to be happy and successful. Um, happiness, I was always taught happiness came from um, money. If you didn't have money, you wouldn't be happy. Um, so that had that kind of drummed into me. And, you know, whilst I don't agree with that at the time, because I was obviously so young, it's all I knew. Um, so I was very, very, I was pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed to my limit. My dad has had and has very high expectations. Um, so I kind of felt like I had a lot to prove. Um, and I was like, right, okay, what am I going to do? So I finished uni, I got a T1. Um, and I applied for loads of graduate schemes and I couldn't get on anything. I really couldn't get anything. So I felt like a bit of a failure. I was just like, what am I going to do? I've, you know, I need to prove some, prove to my dad that I can do it. Um, and I just, I don't know what to do. So I was working part time um, for T-Mobile back then um in um in the Trafford Centre just on the shop floor and my manager at the time said have you thought about recruitment because you like sales like you're good at sales you're good with people and I was like no I just thought recruitment was one of those jobs where people just walk in off the street and say have you got any jobs for me I was like I never really saw it as a career or you know and this this was in 2001 um so you know obviously quite a long time ago and um and that was it I, I started looking into it I applied for recruitment jobs had three or four in serious interviews like final interviews um I was offered a job as a resourcer so I started as a resourcer um and I did that for about nine months to a year. I had quite a difficult start, um, if I'm honest, because I'd, and I think a lot of recruiters have this start, which is a shame because I went from a few different teams mm. due to internal issues at the time. Um, so I had different managers and I didn't really have any consistency. And back then I was like, right, here's a job here's your computer, here's your phone, go away and find me three or four CVs for this job. And I was like, I remember my first job, it was a web designer. And I was like, oh my God, what am I looking for? What do I do? Um, but I just went for LinkedIn. For, for, the pre, for the LinkedIn generation, this is before LinkedIn was even in. Yeah. LinkedIn. Oh God, yeah. Before, way before LinkedIn. And it was, you know, searching job boards, ringing you know, high, very high volume of calls um, and really kind of like kind of trolling and fact, trying to find work really hard to find candidates. Only obviously it's still really hard now, but just in different, different ways. Um, and um, yeah, so I just, it was a bit of a tricky kind of start in recruitment for me. And I really wanted to do sales um, and I was stuck doing a resource role for about a year um, and I was picking up all these leads, but I wasn't allowed to follow up the leads myself. Um, so I just started working, putting more into it. I was working, I was getting into work at like seven, half seven, um, finishing at like half seven, eight. I'd take, C I used to print CVs off, take them home with me. I bought books, like I did anything and everything that I could to become better quicker. Um, and then I moved on. Um, moved on to a company called Computer People. I was with them for about five years, five, six years. And that's when my career started to really kind of flourish. Um, spent, I went straight into a contract 360 role, which was really, wow. really fucking hard, really hard. And I'll be honest, I was not successful at it. I did it for six to nine months and I was not very good at all. Um, I think I made about two or three placements and I really, really struggled. And I was just really starting to question whether I had it, whether I could do it. Um, and, and I was off sick for a bit. Like I was really stressed because I'm one of those that I put it all on myself. Yeah. Um, and then one of probably like my favourite all time bosses that I'll never forget was a guy called Andrew Wadsworth. I still speak to him every now and then. Um, and he was like, come back and come and work with me on the perm team. So I did. And ever since then, I've never looked back and I've just got, I've just gone up, 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 up and up. And, you know, I was winning like, um, back then they did like um, top 10, they did like newcomer and rising star and top 10 
um, sales, sales consultants, etc. And I went to Vegas, went to India, um, you know, went on all the trips and things like that. And I had a great, 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 great time. Um, and then after then, I worked for a few other businesses. I worked for Harvey Nash, did a couple of years there. I worked for a couple of smaller companies, went to iSource, went to a company called Neon, where I set up technology for them because they were in FMCG. Um, and I'd always, along the way, I'd always thought about setting up my own business because my dad's a businessman. My dad um, came to England and set his business up. Um, and I'd always thought about it, but I just didn't have the, I didn't have the balls, I'll be really honest. I didn't have the guts and the, the balls to do it by myself. Um, and then um, I'd been approached by um, a company that set up, a company called Larson Group that set up experienced recruiters, kind of like as contractors, as like freelance or associate directors. And I was considering that and I, I didn't, I pushed it off, pushed it kind of back for a year or so. And then um, they ke I kept in touch with the guys that owned the business back then. Um, and um, I tried something else for a bit and I thought, actually, I'm going to do it. And I just That's did it. Time as any. My husband did it at the same time. So we're both doing it at the same time. Oh my God, it was the most stressful time ever. <laughs> Nine months of, I gave my car back. Um, had a really nice car and I gave that back I, I remember it was near Christmas and I had to say to all my friends and family I normally spend like decent amount of money on you guys but I'm just I haven't got it now when I have to cut back it was so hard starting again blood sweat and tears went into it lots of long hours weekends um, you know it was really really hard and and then since then we've just um, yeah, just flourished and grown. We we moved away from the Larson Group about four or five years in. Um, Ellie Greeny um, joined me as a resourcer, um, and Emma um, Emma Alston, who was known as Hans Hansen then um, Emma Alston, she um, joined me as well quite early on, and they've both been really really instrumental in growing Transition Partners. Without them, and particularly without Ellie, we wouldn't be where we are today. Um, you know, they both together gave me that support and that confidence that we could do this and we yeah. could do it together. Oh, wow. Um, so, yeah, hopefully. Well, I think I feel like I rambled on a little not bit. At all. No, so it's, much, it's 20 years to try and fit well, in. Well, it'd be like someone asking me. I love that sliding door moment with Andy Wadsworth. We'll definitely tag, make sure these people are tagged. Yeah. Um, yeah and I love the fact that, you know, you, you, you show such openness and honesty about your journey. And I think there's going to be a lot of people listening because most people listen. I mean, we're recording it so people can watch if they want. Yeah. But people will be listening nodding to so many things that and you know before we move on to the underdog part it's so you know that first few months we hear that all the time as rector where people have sort of almost been plonked and then you move and then you move and it's you can't build your momentum so there's so many lessons there for people to go that you've got to make sure that you harness people and actually what Andy saw in you was that you weren't a great contract recruiter but you're a bloody good perm recruiter so it's brilliant it's, it's really insightful so in terms of this underdog so why do you do, why do you feel you are and, and and then from that point of view when you're looking at people you hire into your business now do you secretly look for underdogs to bring in yes it's a good question is that um because I I've always yeah probably secretly always looked to and I think and I think it's quite a common trait in in us kind of like sales people and, and recruiters is that you do generally look for people who are like-minded mm -hmm. um who you know when I've interviewed and tried to attract talent um some of the questions I've asked um have always been based around understanding their backgrounds and and their you know their how they've been brought up what their family do what their brothers sisters siblings etc um to really understand whether they've got something to prove because that's what that's what's worked for me and that's what's driven me and I'm I'm actually as much as I didn't have a great upbringing. I've missed out on a lot, but at the same time, I did. You know, like there's there's kind of pros and cons, and yeah. I wouldn't be where I am today if my dad didn't push me as much as he did. But he has pushed me really bloody hard. Do you, do you think that it is nature or nurture to make you the person that you are? I strongly believe in um, nurture. 
Um, I do strongly believe in nurture, um, but I also believe in allowing, um, you know, I, I, I believe that that's how my route is, you know, my journey has gone. Um, and, and I do believe in it, but I also, I mean, I've got a son myself, he's six nearly. Um, and I'm obviously going to nurture in the in the way that I believe I need to nurture but at the same time I want to allow him to have that freedom to make his own decisions and create his own path and Mm -hmm. um you know I know he's only young and some people might think well he's only he's only five and a bit he's you know six in a couple of months and but the way that I'm trying to um mother him and 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 grow you know allow him to grow up is is really help him to feel empowered and like he's making some of these decisions even now you know I'm well what do you want to do what do you think we should do where do you think we should go this weekend what time would you like to go to the park today um you know um, and I've learned that through and another person actually we should tag and and I have a personal coach um and I've needed one along along the years after I've ever, everything that I've kind of been through and um she's um she specializes in working with children she's called Libby um I can't remember a full she's got a double barrel surname and I can't remember that I'll give you it after so we can tag her and she's been absolutely amazing and instrumental in helping me in work out of work um sorry I know we're going a bit off piece here now <laughs> No, it's good. Um, it's really important. I think having a coach, having a mentor in your life is really, really important. And I do just want to pick up on what you've said there, that empowered yeah. mindset, because for those who are listening who are aspiring leaders or maybe are being managed in a non-empowering way, it's it's the only way. And we talked off camera about parenting. You know, I've got my, my children are obviously a lot older than your son. They're, they're 16 and nearly 14. I've always brought them up in an empowered way because that's how I manage. I empower you know, you've you obviously deal with Shannon over in Leeds. You know, she I've let her run. She she was employed as my resource, and within about a week, I was like, I'm just going to let her do three sixty because she clearly has got the capability. Yeah. That's an empowered style, and I think I, I really subscribe to everything that you're saying there about underdog. I think in recruitment, it doesn't matter whether you're you're recruiting a web designer as you were, or whether you're recruiting a, a, a CTO. Understanding somebody's journey <laughs> and understanding where someone's come from in terms of mindset whether they're the underdog or whether they've come from a privileged background, what makes them who they are is actually the fabric of what will make the DNA of your business. So I think it's such an important... And why don't more leaders... You know, this whole competency-based and psychometric profile is all good, but actually what you do, I think, is why this topic's so important. We we talked about this, didn't we, actually, when it's just reminded me when we spoke in... um, Was it January? um, And we were talking about obviously we were using you guys to help us grow and and um and recruit at the moment and and that's you know that for me has always been really important when when interviewing my style is very much kind of more personality based and really getting to know and understand that person um you know because I do believe that um people at the end of the day people buy from people and if you're a likable person and you're genuine and you're open and honest I mean our values as a business we're very very open and honest and, and transparent yeah. mm. um, and they're the sorts of people that I like to hire that I you know that are nice genuine people yeah um, because it, for me it's what makes it's what makes me feel as well happier coming into work being surrounded oh, by these people these like-minded um people you know rather than kind of situational based interviewing or competency based and um you know or, or doing all these psychometric tests and things you we do I'll be honest I mean we we have used them and we do use yep. some of them yep. but they're more personality based led than yeah. anything yeah. else I think it, I think doing skills assessment I, I, and it depends on I mean, we're talking about recruitment to recruitment I said you know it's very important to make sure we, we have that as a caveat we're not saying don't use that as part of your selection process 100% it's it's, it's an aid isn't it to use during the process and yeah. you know what going back to when I was interviewed when I first got into recruitment um one company um and I st- I'm not going to mention the no. name of the person because I still and the, the the name of the person is um is he's um he's very well known in the industry I still speak to him every now and then he declined me for a while because he said I wasn't money motivated enough 
Um, and, you know, it's just interesting because you can, you if you base your decision on things like that, you can often quite miss out on some really, really good people. And, but then I guess on the flip side, there have been situations and times where, you know, we're all human, we all get things wrong. Mm-hmm. I've made, you know, some, some bad decisions, bad hiring decisions um previously and and I'm one thing that I'm quite kind of guilty of is I tend to go with my heart quite a bit like if you know I want I want to help people and um, I'm very big on um anxiety helping people with anxiety and mental health and depression and you know we're a very as a business we're a very supportive um business from that point of view so I tend to if if anybody opens up to me from that point of view in an interview or or within the business yeah. I'm straight there trying straight to help there. them yeah I'll give anyone a job any day for, to help them from that point of view and you know sometimes that doesn't necessarily mean that this is the right environment or the right role for them but you're part of that journey and I think it's you know seeing that as part of your sort of human element and I know we talked on, off camera about the mental health side and I, th- I mean that's a whole different topic in itself but actually yeah. <laughs> getting to understand what someone's drivers are is what's going to bring out the best of them and I think far too many people use just CVs or LinkedIn profiles and just go oh well, they've worked here they must be good and there's a there's a huge level of assumption but actually I think I mean look I, I would I class myself as an underdog definitely you know I was very different context to your upbringing but I'm particularly driven by people's motivators because I don't think there's anything right or wrong there is no right or wrong mm. answer but understanding what makes somebody tick you know for me to me for me it's the job it's actually doing the job it's getting the job done you know we've talked about obviously we both know Shannon Shannon is not particularly money motivated but she is so fastidious in the process it's about getting the right person to the right role yeah exactly like I um, you know one of our one of our really kind of strong account account managers I know um I've worked closely with her for about a year now and yeah. and for her it's it's doing the best that she can do for yeah. her clients and knowing yeah. she's done a really good job yeah um Definitely. you know and and it's been from it's been the same for me for years it's yeah okay I'll be honest I got into this job and the career for a money because I wanted to prove to my dad that I could do well and in his eyes success was earning lots of money um you know and, and a status which, which thing recruitment and, is a great vehicle for earning lots of money but actually I think you know recruitment has evolved as an industry we've been in it a similar amount of time I'm 23 years this year and it was very much in the 90s it was about earning money it was about cash it was you know the OT 100k it wasn't about yeah. becoming a, a, you know an industry champion becoming yeah. you know if you think about our profiles now on LinkedIn can you imagine writing that 20 years ago people would have gone what are you talking about what's DNA I know exactly it's, that's it's, it but actually that's it's so important that we get people like you into this channel because re- regardless of what sector you're in our industry is a professional services sector it's multi-billion pound sector and we are creating jobs we are job creation and the whole employment sector is down to the survival of recruiters doing the best job they can and I just think you know I knew you'd be high energy and I knew you'd be absolutely (laughs) and and I love that you've shared a lot of your personal stories so one final question is, is your dad Mm -hmm. proud of you and does your dad understand what you do for a living because my parents still don't understand what I do for a living he doesn't quite understand what I do. Um, I think he is proud of me. Um, unfortunately, he hasn't ever said that to me, but I know that he has to my brother. Um, and my brother, um, you know, quite often tries to reassure me and remind me that he is. Um, but you know what the important thing is, is that um, I'm in a good place now. And, I've, you know, we've, I've gone on that journey and it's it's been a, a difficult one. Mm-hmm. Um, but I do this now not for him, not for me. I do this to um, do the right thing. Um, and, and our business is, has been built um, around my values and ethics. And, um, you know, it's not about quick wins and quick fees and high fees. Um, it's about doing the right thing, being open and honest, transparent, um, and enjoying it as well. I, I still fun. absolutely, 20 years in, I absolutely still love it. Um, don't know if I mentioned here before, but I've been on a sabbatical um, and I'm I'm missing it so much. <laughs> you can't wait to get back. Um, well, good yeah, for you. And, to it. You know, I think you should be you should be proud of yourself. And I, I actually think that underdogs, very often, it, you can sort of get under the skin of why they feel that they're underdogs where, where are they coming from in the context of their personal upbringing etc but actually it, you'll find that they're very driven by themselves and they look yeah 100 recognition by themselves I don't look for, I don't seek any approval from anybody else 
I think it would be yeah, me. I do for me. But and I don't think when you asked me that question, I was a bit like, oh, can I say that? I'm actually proud of myself. And I don't think yeah. I'd... I don't think underdogs do really. Do they, they like? You, um, I don't know. Have you ever said that to yourself? Like, do you feel? I have over the last year. Over have the you? last year, yeah. I never probably would have done it before because I'm, I'm not into this whole self. I try to get really embarrassed with you know. I've been on the other side like you are today, where and I and I know then I should share on behalf of those people that have taken time to interview me. But I'm almost a bit embarrassed to because I've got yeah. and that's a whole different topic. But I do. I do pat myself on the back with what I've achieved over the last year. Just the fact that I've maintained positive energy. I've still kept a roof over my daughter's head. I've still got a business that's viable and made profit. You know, I know that the podcast is enjoyed by, you know, it's, thousands of people. Yeah, you've, you've done some great work, all the branding. Yeah. And that. I mean, that's how I came across you, in, um, you know, when I was looking for podcasts and I, and I found yours and I was like, this was before you joined up with Hoxo. And I was like, this is great. This is yeah. refreshing. Listen, I've interviewed some amazing people and, you know, some are, are really massive names and some haven't been, but they're just, it, I do feel, and that's, you know, why I was so desperate to get you on today. You know, I just, for me, it's, you will, everyone that's listening and whether you're a recruiter or not, you'll take something away from today's conversation, even if it's just knowing Hopefully. you're not going to Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, something, yeah. a delight. So tell us, tell, <laughs> Thank you. tell us about your podcast then. What's your podcast? Let's Talk Leadership, what's it all about? Yes. Um. So Let's Talk Leadership, we set up, Ellie and I set that up Um. about ju- just before, a couple of months before we went into lockdown, actually, just a couple of months before COVID hit. And um, but it's been great. It's we've had some amazing tech leaders and uh, non-tech leaders. It's all about leadership um, within our industry. And um, we've had some amazing brands on some amazing leaders that are very well known. Um, and again, it's it's with the hope that we can just give back, um, you know, leadership for me is. I, I have got so many leadership um trying to think of the word I've got it wrong so many times um hopefully I've got it right sometimes as well um and you know but it for me leadership it was it was an idea that I had um and I asked Ellie to do it with me because I'm not that confident when it comes to podcasts and things like that so Ellie and I do it together and because she's brilliant um and we just we were together we're great on the podcast um and I wanted to do it to be able to give back to those people that are aspiring to become great leaders Mm -hmm. because you can't you know there's never you can never know everything and you can never get everything right as a leader you're always learning um and um yeah so I've had positive feedback I really do hope that it is helping our community I'm sure I'm I'm absolutely have no doubt about it we'll make sure that when we share this uh, we'll make sure there's links to that as well and oh, uh, thank you, you have, you've been very inspiring I just love your vulnerability your openness <laughs> your energy and we love partnering you and I know that Shannon will want me to say you know thanks for everything you've done to support her and without her this podcast wouldn't be possible because I literally no. to record it with me she does everything else on the podcast oh she's brilliant she's yeah no she's like fantastic you. to work with yeah, she is that's lovely to hear well thank you so much for joining us today and we look forward to hearing from you again you're welcome thank you, thank you.